with all the big calls on all the big races. It's time for another What a Shout, brought to you every Friday morning. The weekend feature action ahead from the Racing Post and our sponsors, Bet365, filmed in the capital. But we've been going all over the place with Skype and we'll be reaching out to Newmarket again for you very shortly. Let us introduce the panel. Of course, Paul Keeley back in the studio. Back on tip-top form, Kills. Uh, yeah, I thought I was. I declared that I was um, uh, earlier in the week and then I tipped three losers yesterday. I'm one of them. Uh, one of them was tailed off by the time they turned in at Sandown, so I'm glad I didn't go last night. Yeah, there's a lot of rain everywhere, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that doesn't normally bother me. You, you totally, you're punting to uh, looking for those sort of horses, don't you? But, I mean, it's going to be pretty awful work. It's unseasonal, go. though, Keezy. And, you, and, and, well, and as I mean, our viewers will know, you're the one that usually... I mean, of all the pundits I work with and of all the colleagues, you're the one that looks at the weather more than anyone. Oh, I, I've got about five or six different weather sites. <laughs> golf I ones and all that sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, you have to. You know, one, one for golf, but two, because I, I do the weekend, I've got to look on a Monday for Saturday's racing, so I've got to try and get an idea. And you can get such conflicting forecasts, um, it's still extremely hard. And, and you know, whenever we've got Haydock, Haydock always gets far more rain than his forecast, doesn't it? Always. And it's hammering down there at the moment. It's already heavy yeah. uh, on the round course. Uh, it's you think it'll be on? Uh, they race on pretty much anything, don't they, at Haydock? <laughs> That's a yes. <laughs> That's a yes. Uh, of course, we've got classic weekend for you as well. It's the Guineas time, isn't it, in the Cara. Of course, there are 34 millimetres of rain overnight, Thursday into Friday. Inspection. 7.30, Saturday morning. They are hopeful, though, Pat Cooney, aren't they? Let's bring Pat in. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I would imagine if the 2,000 is called off on Saturday, they'll just rearrange it to Sunday. So we can still look at the race. But here we are, third week of May. We're looking at heavy ground and inspections <laughs> on the flat. Oh, I know. And it is hate up, uh, so, but uh, that's the world we live in. But uh, heavy ground in May. The swing of the flat season. We'll be getting right into that. So, shall we go to Newmarket? George Barry joins us on the line. That is how I pronounce your name, George, isn't it? Bowie. 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 Yeah. Pronunciation is a bit of a buzzword in 2021. We've got new trainers popping up all over the place and horses and all that sort of stuff. And I must admit, George, when you sprang into prominence in 2019, when you started training, I had it down, is, it, is, it, is this boffy? I wasn't sure. And I thought to myself, I guess if I was coming into racing, I'd want to be called after an icon as well. <laughs> well, I'm not sure we'll um, not be quite as iconic as him, but um, yeah, it's Bowie, so we'll, we'll go with that. Mr. Bowie, welcome along to What a Shout. The viewers, have, I tell you what, they've been sending in loads of questions for you, George, because it has been rather a whirlwind 2021. Is that fair to say? Uh, yeah, look, it's it's started off how we'd like, how we'd have, you know, we'd ever dreamed of, and um, they're running well, and long may it continue, really. Yeah, absolutely. Let's actually concentrate on your strike rates then, George, and let's get a bit of housekeeping up here. So you started in 2019, having spent six years as assistant to Hugo Palmer. That was a natural fit. But you also were down in Melbourne as well, weren't you, with Guy at, at, at Waterhouse. You spent a bit of time working for Lloyd Williams as well, which raises the eyebrow, Mr. Melbourne Cup. Yeah, I, had a, I was only in Australia for a year, but it was... Um... It was a good time and it was a good grounding. I worked for Gay in Sydney and, um, you know, we we had some great horses when I was there. We won the Golden Slipper over each and Piero was there and more joyous. We won 10 group ones down there, I think. And no, it was good. And then I went down to Melbourne, um, spent a bit of time there and, you know, we had horses like Green Moon and things like that. And it was, it was great. It was a good experience. Yeah, and of course, Three Seas was your first winner at Leicester, wasn't it, in August 2019? So it started well. Last year was a good year as well, despite the truncated season that we had. But this season, George, your strike rates have been going off the chart. And one man sitting next to me last Saturday, he tends to have the odd sherbet or two and gets on Twitter, sometimes to his detriment. But this one was a very positive tweet, Paul Keane. That's probably because I was sober. <laughs> Believe that, if you will. No, I, I mean, it, 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 it's funny. Last year they had... Um... Uh, they had a special list for two-year-olds that wanted to run at Royal Ascot because so they got, um, uh, in case they they got exempt from being balloted out, didn't That's they? Right. So, uh, and I, I I I just looked at the list all the time uh, whenever there were two-year-olds, and there was this horse trained by George Bowie, and I, I can't remember the name of it now. I was trying to find it, and it was forty to one, and I thought I've never heard of this guy. I mean, he's got one here, like, you know. So I, thought, I look him. I hang on a minute. He's worked with Gay Waterhouse, and he's worked with Lloyd Williams, and he's. I thought I'll have a few quid on this. Each were at 40 to one. I think it went off eights and it led everywhere but the post. Like, you know what I mean? Broke really well. 
I'm kind of keeping an eye on this. So I do keep an eye. And well, the strike rate is just immense. Uh, and it's been, you know, okay, May has been super special, but when you start striking, striking at 25% month after month after month, like it has, I mean, that's top class trainer um, stats, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's it, it's not just on the turf during the summer, is it? It, it, it? It's during the winter as well. You had a great horse called Catan. Is that how we pronounce his name? And uh, him and Mark uh, Crean had a great winter, didn't they? Yeah, Catam. He's um, he's actually just come back from a break and he's doing his first bit of work tomorrow morning. Um, he was a bit of a bargain buy and it was a bit of a punt, really. You know, we kind of bought him on his physical and his pedigree and he'd only run once with Saeed and you know, he'd been off a year and, and it was a bit of a punt, but I still think he's well treated on the turf and his work on the turf has been, uh, if not better than your weather and those mm. tight tracks probably didn't suit him in the winter. So... He would be a, he's a pretty fun horse of 82, I think. Yeah, he's a bit of a beast as well to look at, wasn't he? Going around Southwell, that was a real pleasure. Ben Curtis, of course, rode him a bit. So, as of Monday, you've had 62 winners. This is when we run all the stats for our guests at the start of the week on Raceform Interactive, George. And I've got to be honest with you, the guys in the Raceform Interactive were like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, this is going to be a bit of a challenge. And they came back about an hour later going, he's incredible on the stats, it turns out. And you had 62 winners as of Monday. Of course, you had Cashew at Windsor on Monday night, another two-year-old that went in. You had Beautiful Sunshine, didn't you, at Sandown on Thursday night as well. So we can add up a little bit. But as of Monday, the stats that you know, on the screen in our graphic that our viewers are seeing. If you looked actually a bit further into that, George, basically half of your horses nearly have finished in the top three. Yeah, they've um, they've been in the right races. And yeah, it's a big thing that we try and do is, you know, run them where, where we think they can win. You know, they're very often, are they going without a winning chance? And, you know, they'd be... I think, you know, if your horses are a shorter price than 10 to 1, you've probably got them in the right races on the whole. And, you know, looking at our form, we haven't got a horse that was bigger than 9 to 1. So, you know, that's kind of, if I have them in the right races, I hope they should, as long as they're healthy, they should be, they should be pretty close. Yeah, we're all hoping for a bit of beautiful sunshine at the minute, as we mentioned in the month of May. But she looked a bit special at Sandown on Thursday night. It was a relatively slow time. I'm putting that down to the ground pretty much, George, because she was in a completely different league to her rivals. Yeah, she was. I um I had a long chat to Rossa last night and and he was in riding work this morning. And I don't think she likes the ground, and neither did he. You know, it was a bit of a fact finding mission and you know, the top class races often at the back end of the year run on soft ground. So I wanted to see how she'd go on it. Um, she's a very good moving filly and you know, wasn't tuned up to win first time out. And, and ran with credit in a good race. But I think we'll see a, a better filly on, on top of you know, decent summer ground. Mm, you went to Chester, of course, didn't you? And took out the big two-year-old race there, of course. Uh, the Lily Agnes. How's he doing? Yeah, he's doing great. He um, He's actually just been entered in the... Uh, national stakes at Sandown next Thursday in Brigadier Gerard night. Um, he'll work in the morning, but he never really worked like a nice horse before I ran him. And you know, he's a very exuberant two year old. I just wanted to get on the track. And he then just kept running because he kept showing his well being. And I galloped in last Saturday, and Nicola came in to ride him. And it was the first time he worked like a nice horse. And he worked with some pretty fair two year olds and worked better than them. So. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to next week. He's he's taking a big step forward. Kills, this is your going to be your appearance on the race course, isn't it? Next yeah, Thursday, I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking into that. You've just been given the will of the national. I might stuff, have to tip it, might I? <laughs> you might just have to tip it. Would he be top of the current pile at the at the moment, George? Uh, I think on what he's achieved, he probably has to be. Um, we run a nice horse tomorrow, who won at Salisbury, uh, Superior Force, another horse by our dad. Um, his work's been pretty good. He worked very well the other morning, and I think he's recorded as high a figure of any of my two year olds this year. So, on debut, which you know, puts him, he, he's probably up there as well. Mm, so, race planning tick, two year olds tick, get the strike rates up. George is going to be a popular 
I guess, for all of you viewers out there, no doubt. Let's have a look at exactly what is coming up on this weekend's show. Okay, hot topic time. We're back on the track. This will be a third part of our looking at getting back on the race courses in the hot topics. We'll be giving you the racing clues from the past week or so. Plenty to chew on as ever there. The big race previews, including some classic action, then the big calls, and of course, the weekend winners. If you'd like to sign up to our sponsors, Bet365, you can do so with a referral code. Type in SHOUT365 on entering. Minimum £5 deposit for up to 100 bet credits. Terms and conditions apply. Hot topic time then. We are indeed back. We've had a week pretty much since Monday the 17th when race goers were allowed back onto the track. Happy days. They are here again. Uh, let's talk to Paul Keeley about what we're expecting in the next month or two. You haven't been racing this week. You're going next week, aren't you? Yeah, I'm going for the biggest years of stakes at Sandown. Have it you was... had feedback, Kills, is what I'm trying to get to. Have you had it? it, it has anyone given you any feedback or anything? I've uh, been brilliant. I, or... I haven't had any feedback. I obviously went um, in December when it was maximum 1,000. And um, obviously you couldn't have a drink. You had to wear a mask inside and out. Uh, I still enjoyed the day. Like, you know, um, he's going to have a little bit more freedom, but not total freedom. Yeah. Uh, it, it's basically, you, you're going to have to be in a certain area from what I gather. Uh, you have to be sitting down when you're having a drink. Um, just no great hardship, is it? Like, you know what I mean? I'm looking forward to getting getting back on the track. I'm going to the biggest year, Ger- Gerard Stakes. Uh, at Sandown, it's only £20 to get in. Uh, you know, it's fantastic value. Uh, and we know that some other tracks have ramped them up. I mean, it's just 60 quid for Chester, isn't it? Like, it seems you know, remarkable, that, doesn't it? 20 quid for Sandown, 20 quid Windsor on Monday, where I was at, it, which was, it was great feeling to be going back, Kiels. But um, I'll talk to you about, it, it was a little bit unknown. You remember when the pubs reopened for Alfresco and all, you know, all that mm-hmm. sort of thing mm-hmm. in April? It, it, it felt like we were back, but we weren't. It's been, I've had a quite a bit of feedback like that this week, basically. It's not going to be the same, is it? Table I mean, service, yeah. for example, you can't go to a bar, you can't go yeah. and all your, you know what I mean? Still, yeah, yeah. things that you take for granted and do so easily on a racetrack, naturally. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's going to be some restrictions. It's not going to be the same experience. But, I mean, most people that are going back are going back because they want to watch the racing as well. Yeah. Are you surprised that Ascot have said we can only have up to 4,000? That's it now. Uh, it did surprise me a little bit. I mean, look, you know, we're having 10,000 in football stadiums that can hold 40,000, and Ascot can hold double that. Mm. Um, I don't know what the logistics of it are. Uh, I gather, as I mean, some of them say, there's lots of bookmakers are up in arms as well, aren't they? Like, you know, the the the, the, uh, the, the on-course bookies, only 12 bookies are allowed. Uh, well, they've got 40 Ascot bet, uh, terminals. Um, I don't know what business those twelve are going to do anyway, because you're talking. <laughs> it's going to be wrong. You're talking high-end yeah. uh, customers yeah. uh, who aren't probably your natural punters as as much as you know the normal. We've been about. coming into an office, say for example, all winter, haven't we? Pretty much, you know, we've been yeah. coming in to provide these shows for you, and you know, in a, depl- in a depleted racing post office, for example, and PCs are not next to each other anymore, for example. So you, you can understand why Ascot have had to do that. But it's a lot of it's optics. All the on, on course bookies were saying we're outside. You know, have you seen the transmission rates? There aren't any. You know, so it, I guess what Ascot are doing is saying the pitch is going to have to be spread out and things like that. It's just, we need to get to June 21 quickly, do, don't yeah. we? We do, yeah. I mean, it all boils back down to um, the, the grief racing got for holding the Cheltenham Festival and racing not being entirely comfortable in yeah. its own skin and wanting to do softly, softly, softly. We don't want any bad headlines. Let's just do it, Yeah. you know, as we're told. Uh, I mean, look, we're a month away now. Uh, that's all it is. It seems like a long time, but remember what it was like in January. Yeah. Well, uh, oh, of course, absolutely. Like, you know, so you know, we're not far away. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I can't wait to go um, to a proper race meeting with no restrictions and get back to. We said get back out onto the race course last weekend. Windsor was sold out. I, I, I keep going back to me. It's because the one I experienced. There were some teething problems. I'm not going to lie. You know. The queues to get in, for example, usually there's a lots of enclosures open. There were pretty much a, 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 a lot of people looked a little bit nervous about that. Did they temperature or anything like that? There was a temperature you check, but not. I have to admit, I didn't see it with everyone. But the one thing I would say to these race courses, and I know some of you are doing it, race cards. Print the race cards. There were QR codes, you know, and it's like I went with my father-in-law. He's seventeen. You know, he's not. You know, he's, I wouldn't be old, but he's not really tech savvy. 
There were no racing posts being sold I could find. There were no, it was just no, nothing to hold. But you can go up to the booking and get a bet slip. You know, it just, it doesn't really work out, no, does it? No, you know, a lot of things about this don't make sense. Yes, but listen, as David Armstrong, the head of the Racecourse Association, has been saying, you have to remember, we're extremely lucky to be back and doing what we are doing. So get out there, enjoy it. June the 21st is on the horizon. Let's get the racing clues in for you then now. And it's really good Saturday last week. I massively enjoyed it, you know. Newmarket and Newbury, sort of head-to-head, weren't they? And we saw some real present and... Future stars, I think, kills. Yeah, I think so, yeah. I mean, I, I must admit, looking at the cars before, I was a bit underwhelmed. I thought this race might not be as good as it was. And, you know, obviously Palace Beer is a good thing. You know, what's it? But it turned out really well. Palace Beer is obviously a very, very good horse. Uh, we've already talked about, um, you know, sorry, we've got... Um, Lady uh, Bothorp. Lady Bothorp yeah. um, coming up. Um, but, yeah, I think, that, I, I think that was a good race. The London Gold Cup is a race I'm, I, I always love. And... and you know, Baybridge, the winner, was the only horse with a group entry in the race. Mm. But I backed King Frankel and on the grounds that Mark Johnson always runs horses that are miles ahead of their marks. Uh, and he beat the rest by four lengths and Baybridge beat him by four lengths. Uh, and I have a feeling that that is a group horse and we're going to see him uh, run at, at Royal Alaska. Obviously, Sir Michael Stout's last winner of that race was Cannock Chase. He went on yeah. to win the... Tercentenary stakes, as it was called. Very then. good. Uh, so yes, I think this is a, this is another one. He, he he looked very good. He's in King Edward the seventh, isn't he? Uh, he is, but I mean, obviously there are entries for others, so he might not we'll need to go up. He might not need to go up to yeah. a mile and a half. Yeah. Okay. So that we think uh, was a very good horse. Um, and Pat Cooney, that was some gamble, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It was. It was just a terrific day's racing, wasn't it? But uh, plenty of money for horses. Bay Bridge, of course, a, a real standout. You could just see him being a group horse one day. Uh, but lo- lots to like, wasn't there? There's a, the list is endless. So, uh, yeah, I think I think last week was a pretty powerful weekend for uh, putting horses in the notebook. Mm, OK, all right. So let's uh, let's keep with Newbury. al um, I, I was in this studio on Saturday and, and we were texting because you will remember if you watched the show last week that, that Kills, you napped one Tasman Bay, didn't you? Mm. Uh, that was in the John oh, Leeper no, race. Well, yeah. you'll see where we're going on this. Mm. And we had to sort of re-record the naps because I... <laughs> My mind was wondering when Kills was given his nap and I then came straight in with John Leeper. And he went, oh, I thought I'd denied you a winning nap on the show. Turns out I was with Bay Breeze. But John Leeper, let, let, let's just concentrate on him quickly. Derby horse? <sighs> Entitled to run in it. I can't see that form being that good. I mean, he did plenty wrong. He was, he was, um, you know, he was keen. Um, Funny race. Well, I thought uh, Tasman Bay ran well. It, it was funny. Right? Tasman Bay ran really well. Uh, you know, he was, you know, I thought, I did think he'd had it at, at one point. But obviously, John Lee was a, a, a pretty decent horse, but he did plenty wrong during the race, which he, he obviously, if you can iron out that keenness and all that. But he's going, he's probably run to low hundreds, really, 106, 107, maybe. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, that's £10 off Bolshoi Bally at the very least, and there's no reason why Bolshoi Bally won't be a better horse as well. So, mm. uh, to me, single figure prices reflect the lack of credible challenges in the derby rather than his chance of winning it. Yes, OK. Oh, I was going to go to Pat with the derby money, but you're, you're quite right. He's about a sort of seven, eight to one, isn't he? Uh, of course, he's, his mum won the Oaks and, you know, he's by Frankel, so ab- absolutely every right. And I, it's great to see a Dunlop back with a potential sort of globe trotter again, isn't it? Let's go to Al Arzi then. Um, William Haggis came on the show last week and told us that the logician had reportedly worked like a drain. I thought he put himself back on track in finishing, but only third to Al Arzi, who looked like a Rolls Royce. Uh, yeah, he did. He was <laughs> something else, wasn't he? And uh, what did you message me last Saturday? Uh, you said, you can tell the viewers on your live show that I've only ever backed Al Arzi once. Yeah. It was at the Gordon Stakes. <laughs> oh, when he finished last. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it was one of those. Uh, I actually backed Thunderous just to try and have something against it, but I had a good bet. He ran well. I had a good bet on him without. Like, you know, I mean, that was uh, that was the important one. But yeah, he ran well. He's, he's, he's a really tough horse, but he's obviously limited. He's going to be one of those who's going to be around. Uh, for a fair while with him, pick up his listed races every now and again, but he's not just not quite top class. But Al Arzi, different, different class altogether. Uh, I've been trying to talk um, weekender editor Tom Park and go into the arc. Um, ages because I've, I've, book, I've, I've booked for a jolly for, no, for, uh, for the jolly and he sent me a text he said I think I might have to come now because I've backed Al Arzi at 40s yes <laughs> and William uh, after the race uh, William Haggis great guest last week wasn't he he said to us uh, you know at the post it, that is the ultimate aim but uh, I wouldn't have run him in the Aston Park you know had he not been so well and now it's Coronation Cup and he's a rightful short price Pat Cooney 
Yeah, he's all the rage, isn't he? And, uh, you know, I mean, you can imagine being Jim Crowley turning into the home straight. I'm tracking logician. I've got him beat. I've got Thunderous beat. Um, hugely impressive. You would imagine him going to Epsom, winning there. He's going to be a short price favourite there. He's not slow either, is he? He could drop down maybe the Judmont, mile two and a half, but we'll leave that to William Haggis. He gave us the clues, though, William, didn't he, at the show? He had to give three pound and weight away to logician. But William wasn't phased by that at all. He knows he has a good one here. And we've now seen it on the track and it's onwards and upwards. He's um, he's unopposable, I think, at uh, in the coronation at Epsom now. Ooh. Highly strong. I only think two handlers in the paddock. I mean, this could be his year, but what happens when crowds come back? Well, you know yeah, what I mean? It's, it's all about handling the occasion, isn't it? The Derby meeting will you know, tell us Derby meeting, I mean, the Derby will get away because there'll only be 3,000 there, won't there? Um, but obviously there's a parade for the Coronation Cup as well. And like, William you know. did say it was the start of the race. Once we get through that, he'll be fine. And you could tell he had the twinkle. Yeah, exactly. He what about Logician? Um, He's lost the Group 1 sparkle, has he? He's lost it a little bit, but I mean, they must believe there's something there because obviously he he can, you know, he'd be a jump stallion tomorrow, wouldn't he? Like, you know what I mean? So maybe they're trying to turn him into something else. If he turned up in a Harbick on rattling ground, would you to give him Would you give him more than a second glance? Um, look, he's got the form to win one, hasn't he? We exactly. know that. Like, you know, but I mean, it depends what's ranged up against him. I'd have to have a look and, and, and see exactly what he did in that Louis race again. I don't, you know, he didn't do that that bad, but maybe he's not quite the horse that he was. I don't know. Mm, the form of the Aston Park states is polarised opinion, I think. Straight away, a, a, a lot of guys I was with were saying, no, he's beaten, he's mm. beaten, you know, a logician who's no good and thunderous who, who got the run of it. And, well, I mean, hang on, meet a Dante when they're in a, 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 a innocent yeah, legend. And, well, and, and he was walking while the rest were flat out. So, Absolutely, I mean, yeah. you know, I don't think you can knock the horse. He's very, very good. My only worry would be slight worry because it's, it's unproven, but he does need two handlers. Uh, he did need two handlers in the parade. You just wonder. Uh, a really busy meeting, whether that will affect him in any way. And a quick word on Palace Pier, of course. Uh, Peerless was the headline and the Racing Post on Sunday. Great headline. Uh, we, we'll talk about Lady Bothorp coming up a little bit on, uh, later on with our guest George Barry, as Kiel's alluded to. But Top Rank was third. A couple fell in the hole, didn't they? Loppy Fernandez never turned up. But this is this is one of the best horses in the world, right? Oh, without a shadow of a doubt, yeah. I think he's, you know, he, you know, he's very good. He's got that one blot on his name when uh, uh, Ascot last year, but otherwise it's progression, progression, progression. We do know that the Marlin division has been very weak uh, since the days of Frankel, basically. Um, you know, he's probably not quite as good as Acceleration, who Frankel used to thrash on a regular basis, and he was a superstar horse himself. Um, but he's not far off um, that level either, like, you know, and that makes him an awful lot better than most of the miles around at the moment. So Queen Anne, tick? <sighs> well, you would think Queen Anne, when he was talking about going up, wasn't he? He was talking about Jump going up, possibly Jump Monte, that would be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about, otherwise you'd be thinking Queen Anne Sussex straight away, wouldn't you? If he, if he gets a mile two, like he does a mile, <laughs> it's gonna be some division that. Can you imagine him and a Dave going like, on yeah, to the end and be, and you know, the clips? It'd be very, very interesting. Yeah, so listen, the hot flat season, isn't it hotting up? We've still got some stars out there, don't you worry. Let's get into our big race previews then, and across the Irish Sea go we for the 2,000 guineas. As Pat mentioned, of course, if this is off, loads of rain over there at the car, 7.30 morning inspection, they probably will indeed move it to the Sunday card. And it's an interesting race. No Thunder Moon, but a couple of them do lock horns again, Pat Cooney, from the Newmarket Classic, including the winner. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a real conundrum, this race, isn't it? And the favourite at the moment is Lucky Vega, who ran ever so well in the guineas. But the market is sort of then dominated by horses who didn't run up to their very best form last time out. The likes of Wembley, Poetic Flair, Max Swinney, Battleground, Van Gogh. They all kind of disappointed last time, but you could say, ah, yeah, but on their best form, they would be better than Lucky Vega. Lucky Vega was the um, um, automatic choice to be favourite for the race at the start of the week, drifting at the moment, because I suppose on based on two-year-old form, we were thinking, well, maybe the mile would be a bit of a stretch for it. Of course, it was good ground at Newmarket, and he ran ever so well. Can he repeat that run on more testing ground, put in more emphasis on stamina this time around? Remains to be seen. So I think there's horses in, in the market that are bigger prices than him that are probably contracting price because of their proven performance on the trip. So favourite Lucky Vega, yes, because of the last run. Can he do it again, testing his stamina? Not so sure. So a conundrum of a race, this one. Be interesting to see what happens 
one that has been popular uh, since the final decks came out has been Poetic Flair, who really the ball didn't bounce his way in France last time out. Um, and he has got form on soft ground. I suppose he could shorten up a bit. But a tricky race. Do you go with the last time out or the overalls? Mm, OK, that's the word from Pat then. Let's get some views from the panellists. Uh, Paul Kitty, give us some help on this. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, look, if, if a racetrack like the Curra is having an inspection, we are talking Turtle Island type ground, aren't we? Like, you know, I remember when he won the race by half a furlong years ago. Uh, it's going to be very, very soft. A lot of the horses aren't going to handle it. I don't see how Lucky Vegas gets home on it. I really don't, because you're going to need to get a lot further. Brings me to Max Swiney. I mean, or Max Swiney, Max Swiney. Um, he's just a completely different proposition when given when given really sticky conditions. Um, he had an excuse um, for the Darren Stown fourth, which wasn't a horrific one by any stretch of the imagination. Mm. He just got beat by the by a Red Hot Derby favourite. Uh, um, but he had a nasal discharge afterwards. The, um, the trainer says he's happy to run him here and in the derby. Uh, you know what I mean? So he, he can't uh, can't be that much wrong with him. But what he's got is the ground. He won the Futurity in Ireland last year on soft ground at 28 to 1, and he came over uh, to the UK and he won the Futurity uh, at Doncaster on heavy ground. Mm. Um, he will go through it better than most. I think he's still, you know, he, he, he's still just about in double figures. I, I, money has to come for him, surely. Historically, the three that tick all the boxes are you usually have to come from Newmarket, don't you? Win or be placed. Poetic Flair is in there. So Kevin Manning doesn't ride McSwiney. We'll call him McSwiney, shall we? And, yeah, oh, it's uh, hard to get off a classic winner, well, isn't it? Of course. A, a classic winner this season. Do you get the feeling that they're just rolling the dice for this chap? Because he wasn't in the Derby, Poetic Flair. He was in the Commonwealth Cup, which suggests he's a sharper sort than some of the others. And the dogs were barking for McSwiney pre the Darren's down for the Derby. So they've so many... Yeah, that's right. I mean, I, I, I can see the horse stepping up. I think it's very important to him the ground, though. Um, but, you know, it ain't going to dry out, is it? Yeah. Lucky Vega. Uh, they're really keen on him, aren't they? But they've been really unlucky with the weather. Will it come back for Wembley? He acts on heavy ground, doesn't he? George Barry, what did you make of this? I think I agree, actually, with what you were saying there. You know, Lucky Vega, I think, is very short, 11 to 4 on soft ground. Um, the two Bolger horses would be the ones for me. Um, Max Sweeney, Max Swiney. Um a very good winner at Doncaster at the back end and Ken Furlongs might not have been as you know had he had a few excuses there. If I was having a bet, that would be the one for me, I think. Um doesn't look like Aiden's strongest team, Wembley and Van Gogh. Battleground probably wants quicker ground. The interesting one, my old boss Palmer, mm. lost the Perian, drawn well near side on soft ground. Um I actually was chatting to him yesterday about it. It's the first time he's run it on the right track since it, since its debut. Um, he's a huge, great horse. I see him every morning and probably didn't like Ponte. Well, I know he didn't like Ponte. But ran just behind Mr. Angel. Um, and then probably was given too much to do by Andrea Zini, you know, by no fault of his, but just got too far back at Newmarket in the Craven. And he's an interesting horse, I think. Yeah, he was entered in the German Guineas, wasn't he? If you read the front runner email from Chris Cook every morning, it's a remarkable story about how the German government basically said, ask the police if you can come over and run. And they said, nine, basically. <laughs> so he, here he is at the car instead. He's entered in handicaps as well. So Hugo obviously thinks a great deal of that, a classic winning trainer, of course. There's an interesting one from George Barry. Pat Cooney, did we get a tip from you? Yeah, I just keep coming back to Poetic Flair. Um I, I, I give him a pass for his run in France last time out. You could say, oh, wait a minute, he's had three runs in the Guineas in three different Guineas. But Jim Bowl just done this before with a Philly Finch school Bo. I think she won two out of the three, narrowly beaten in the third. So I, I can see poetic flair, people just coming back to saying, look, he's a classic winner. He goes on the ground. But his other runner is, uh, it wouldn't be a surprise if Jim Bolger had the first and second. What no. order, I don't know, though. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of love. Jim Bolger holds the key. It's Turtle Island weather out there. 3.35. Let's go up to Liverpool. Haydock, it's their time to shine. Good card. This, of course, we've got the Temple States coming later on. But a little prelude is the Sandy Lane Stakes, won by some top sprinters over the years. And Pat Cooney, we've got a clear favourite here. We've got a clear favourite, yeah, and he's a bit of a machine, this one. Dragon symbol, four runs, four wins. Archie Watson, uh, what's not not to love? Well, the only problem is he's not gone on heavy ground before. Um, he's so quick and all the speed gurus in the office are all over him like a rash. But uh, can he be that quick on testing ground? Jury's out. He's three to one at the moment. And of course, you look at the official ratings for the race. 
There's a, you could throw a tea towel over probably half a dozen of these on official ratings. The dragon symbol version we've seen so far, I think merits being favourite. But there's a bit of a leap of faith saying he's going to be just as effective on testing ground. So I think punters are going to respect him, perhaps look elsewhere. There's others in the race that have got form on testing ground. Mujbar is an interesting run of Owen Burrows. He won the, uh, sorry, Charlie Hills. He won the race that formerly known as the Horace Hill over seven on heavy ground last year, beating St. Lawrence. He blew out in the green on his reappearance. But I'm kind of looking at horses that have got proven form on extremely testing ground. And the fact that Mujbar, St. Lawrence, they've got form over Ferner, that's going to help them in the dying strides. Dragon Symbol would have been the pick on fast ground. I think you can take him on on this testing ground, though. Mm, George Barry, let's come to you. What caught your eye in the Sandy Lane? Uh, on normal ground, I think the Watson horse would be almost impossible to beat. I thought he looked a real star the other day. Um, but it's going to... I mean, the going stick said it was 4.6 or something. I think it's a shambles that it's not already heavy ground. Um, but, yeah, look, I think you're going to have to have something that's got form on it. I think Rohan's interesting. Um, they're going to go a good gallop. And, you know, he's by Mason. There's every chance that he'll go on the ground. Um, of the proven ones, an outsider, I quite like Richard Farkey's horse. Who won the, the Clyde last year? Um, looked a bit free over seven at Newbury. Um, back to six. It was very soft at air when she won the Perth Clyde. I actually had a filly that wanted soft ground, but it was too soft for her. So I don't know. That's an interesting one. Um, yeah, look, if if Watson's handles the ground, I think I think it looks a class class performer that. Dragon to roar then for for, uh, for George. This is interesting. Uncle Thumb, I think, is quite interesting. I, I, I'm, I'm, she's my next best in the race, I think, Kills. I'm going to cover two. I'm going to Dutch her and also Mujbar as well, who Pat mentioned. Did you read the stable tour from Charlie Hills this week? He gave, he gave an interesting mention to it. Yeah, I love this ground, I think. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm interested in it. I mean, I backed St. Lawrence earlier in the week uh, because I think he might be a soft ground six furlong horse. And he'd get further, wouldn't he? Uh, and and he, does stay that, he does stay that bit further. He just hasn't been seeing it out. But I think the soft ground, soft ground and six furlong might just suit him very well. But Mujbar... Uh, came past him despite getting hampered early on uh, uh, at Newbury last year. And uh, I've sort of come round to him as well. He's got those two wins over seven furlong on soft and heavy ground. Um, he's by a Commonwealth Cup winner in Muharar. Uh, he's a half brother of a Commonwealth Cup winner <laughs> in Ectidar. Yeah. Uh, so it's all about sprinting. And But unlike them, he really, want, he really does want soft ground. So he's yeah. got everything in his favour. And if he's going to... Uh, if he's going to stake a claim for the Commonwealth Cup, which is now the only... Um, Group race he's got uh, an, an entry in now because um, obviously they tried him over further. He was way too free at Newbury. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, he's he, he's a big interest to me. I mean, I can see him being um, pretty much the gamble of the day myself. So two for you, Mujbar, just on well, top. I've backed St. Lawrence, but Mujbar, I'm, I'm starting to get the hots for him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Once again, umbrella weather. Mujbar, he ticks a lot of boxes. For Ted at Haydock, it is the Group Two Temple Stakes. No Batash, basically, he's going to make his seasonal debut in the King's Dan, as he did when winning it last year. That blows it open. If you put Batash in this lineup, kills, you go, ah, oh, it's perfectly respectable. Temple Stakes, take him out, and we're scratching our heads a little bit. Uh, well, yeah, we are, because, you know, Batash is head and shoulders, you know, when he's at his best, he's head and shoulders the best five furlong sprinter around, isn't he? Best we've seen for a long while. Um, but it's, it's a competitive race in its own right. Liberty Beach followed him home at Royal Ascot last year. She won... Uh, I think it was the Sandy Lane last year. No, it was it was, it was another it, six, it was furlong, six furlong race. Another yeah, yeah. six furlong race that she won on the track. She does handle a bit of soft ground. Just prefer keep busy, and I don't know whether I prefer keep busy because I absolutely loved. You it. are a big I, fan of this. I thing, absolutely well, I absolutely yeah. loved um, uh, Dam. Look busy. Uh, look busy. Goes to back all the time, and she won this race uh, on bad ground. Uh, and obviously, Keep Busy just kept on improving throughout last season. She was second to Art Power at, at Royal Ascot mm. in a handicap. Uh, kept on improving, ran close to glass slippers uh, at the Cora, then finished fifth, at the, fifth in, in the arc. And, you know, she lives up to her name. She raced after race after race. She's won on heavy ground in France. Um, I think she'll go I think she'll go well. I don't think she's a standout bet because I think it's actually quite close between them all. Uh, but I'd like to see her win it. Kayamoro's in the race, of course, who saw the backside only of Batash a couple of times last year. Uh, yeah, so I don't know whether she wants it that deep, does she? She's a she's a hare, though, isn't she? So yeah, and so is Jabba Rocky as well, yeah. so we're not going to be short of pace. Yeah, I thought that would suit Liberty Beach, you know, and, mm. and I think that it, it, it's 
Yeah, it's, it's close. It's, it's the not, Queen's toss up, isn't it? Really? They're not standout bets. You wouldn't be surprised if they were first and second. Although, Ain, uh, you know, somebody asked me about Ainsdale the other day. I mean, he's got an awful lot to find, but he does like he does really like uh, soft ground. I think. Yeah. Could heavy ground be the leveller in this race, then, George? Um. Yeah, it's going to be bottomless, isn't it? And I'd say it's between the top two. John Quinn's got a pretty good hand on the race. Um, I can't see Keir Moro being able to last out on, on soft ground, well, on heavy ground. Um, keep busy would be the one for me. Oisin Murphy, Michael Table, John Quinn, that'll do for me. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, have stable Phil, please. Absolutely quite right. Um, Actually, I thought an interesting one, Sam Haggis and I tried to buy Declaring Love at the mayor's sale last year. Um, we didn't have quite as deep a pockets as Megan Evans did. Um, and she's now a listed winner. So look, there's, there's, there's reason to say that she could run a big race. And I think she's 25 to 1 outside of the field. But it'd be great to see them get a bit more black type. Interesting, absolutely. If, if only you tried in 2021 after the purses you've been nicking, George. Uh, Pat, let's come to you then. Who's going to go off clear, Fav? I think Liberty Beach should go a favourite, just principally on the basis. Kia Mura, maybe that's the best form, the runner-up to Batash. Uh, but she is the front runner. Maybe she's better on faster ground. With Liberty Beach, what you're getting is a horse who's won first time out at two, first time out at three. So first time out at four is not going to hold any terrors. Third in the Abbey... Form on heavy ground, I would imagine that one will go a favourite. But it's tight, isn't it? I actually do fancy one at a bigger price here. Lady in France, who was well beaten on its reappearance. OK, we can forgive that. It was against Starman. That's, you know, that's an OK effort. Uh, but it, she has got form on heavy ground. And you play the Prix de Labbe run back when Liberty Beach was third. She was fourth. And I thought she could have been a bit nearer. So Liberty Beach, two to one. Lady in France, eight to one. The Abbey runs would suggest they're about the same horse. So I could see value in uh, the, the lady in France for Carl Burke for me. Mm, OK, the no batash then, but the Phillies look like they're going to shine in the Temple Stakes, who will be the queen at 4.10. Big call time then this weekend's What a Shout. I'm going to start, if you don't mind. We've been talking about the Sandy Lane. We've been talking about the Sprinters, former Commonwealth Cup winners. Well, I've got a feeling I might have seen the winner of this year's edition in France this week. It was a filly called Swayza, a rare in training purchase uh, by the combinations you know that brought you rainbow view and such great fillies over the years Swayza um, won the same race that Wooded would have won and run in at the Commonwealth Cup you remember because of Covid reasons Wooded wasn't able to come over last year for Graffard of course and, and, and his French team he ended up winning a Labbe it's a serious race she's a serious filly Pat Cooney what price is she for the Commonwealth Cup yeah she's eight to one second fav behind Campanelle from the uh, Wesley Ward combination and the dragon horse that runs at Haydock is there at 10. Yeah, four runs, four wins. Um, I, I think she's done it all on soft ground, hasn't she? So maybe we get a fast Royal Ascot. Who knows? She might be better or she might be worse. But I did look at the run uh, when I read about the, the, the glowing reports about her. She's pretty nippy, isn't she? So who knows? Mm. She might be better on faster ground. So one definitely to take seriously. But you're trying to take on a Wesley Ward favourite, Campanelle. Um, so it's going to be a good race, this one, I'm sure. Yeah, did you see that in the week? The trainer said she might be better on quicker ground as well. Uh, yeah, they always they, they always say that when they when they, when they hack up in the mud, though, <laughs> do don't they? So? I mean, that happens what, all the time. What, assuming they you're going to get? Oh, I don't think she really liked it, but but they, but they do. Yeah, like like you know, and then you know, you, you I mean, you, I, I, I'm talking more from a jumps perspective, really. But when you see him, I'm going to be fine. You know, I, I think it'd be better on good ground. It does remind me a bit of Moonlit Cloud, who, of know, course, nearly I mean, they, broke black. They might be. There are plenty of horses that handle all of it, but when they go really, really well on soft, you've always got to beg the question, haven't you? And we've got to find out. But then uh, we're talking about Britain here. Yeah, uh, well, exactly. The ground's just as likely to be soft at Ascot as it is good these days. Yeah, uh, you know, it has, you know, was it three out of the last five years or something, isn't it? He's been on the easy side. So we just don't know. We don't know. Give us a big call. Well, yeah, I got I got another horse. One now that we ran out of time to talk about when we were when we were doing the review last week. Um, a horse at York that just absolutely blew me away called Winter Power Philly. Now, you know what York is like for horses. It's very much a specialist course. And when a horse can run that fast there, uh, I'm thinking none thought. Right? She carried £10 more than Copper Knight uh, on the same day and ran half a second faster than them. She completely blew the field away. I mean, you've got horses. I mean, Kea Moro came from nowhere last year to finish second to, to Batash. Mm. Winter Power is another York horse. Um, obviously, there's no anti-post market for the Nunthorpe this far in advance, but she'll be in it. 
Uh, and I went, she'll end up being a big player. Mm, Pat Cooney starts tapping away then, talk to your trainers. That's an interesting shout, isn't it? Because Patash is never at his best in the non door is he? No, and he's another no, year older. He's beatable, yeah. yeah. I see that, Kills. Very nice indeed. Winter power then with Kills. George Bowie, have you got a big call for us? Um, Lady Bowthorpe in the Duke of Cambridge. I thought, I thought her form was a completely different level to last year. Everyone sort of... I thought it was a fluke on better ground at Newmarket and you know Queen Power came out and absolutely hosed up at York um, and then she ran behind what I think is possibly the, one of the best horses in the world the other day um, ridden with restraint I think I don't think the ground really matters to her I think you know, it's great William Jarvis has got a rocket again and, and she looks very good I think. Mm, do you think so she's a moral for the Duke of Cambridge is she? I don't think she's a moral but she's She's short enough now, but she'd, she'd be my call, for sure. A moral means an all-in job kills, as you so, well know. I used to, yeah, exactly. I used to really like Lady Beaufort. We're back to first time out this season. Oh, no. But then I had an absolute chunk on top, top rank without the favourite. <laughs> What's it? And she come flying past. Yeah, because you fancied uh, her for the Dahlia, didn't you? Of yeah, course. exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, that was, weird. that was a really good run. I mean, Where did it come let's from? Take, let's take Palace Pier out of that, and she's blown away. The, the, uh, the right horse. Uh, the, you know. Top yeah. rank was 30, of yeah, course. exactly, yeah. No, it's Lady really good horse. Beaufort. There we yeah. go. Okay, so another Philly mentioned sways up Lady Bothorp two Royal Ascot winners Pat Cooney what have you got for us this week yeah I read at the start of the uh, the flat season and in, in all the trainer tours and everything John God, John and Lady Gosden they said oh we haven't got a three year old this year don't worry about us we won't be involved in the classics we just haven't got a three year old fair enough he didn't have one in the uh, in, in either guineas but he had a winner at uh, Sandown on Thursday night the Heron Stakes a listed race a horse called Mostadef uh, and the, the, this horse they had two runs, two wins on the all weather. There was no great hype about them. He won, he ran green and he won handily. No one was ever really going wow. And he ran at Sandown on Thursday evening, first time on turf, first time on soft. Good race. He won that very, very well. He said he didn't have a three year old at the start of the season. I, I know this much. He's got one now. This horse is going to be a real force in any race he runs in from now to the rest of the season. He might just end up the best miler as, as a three year old around for me. Hmm. Thirty in a row. Gosden's won that race. Uh, obviously, he won it without parole. He went on to win the St James's Palace King, King of Comedy. Won it um, uh, in 2019. Went on to be beaten the neck in the St James's Palace. So he could go there. He's a uh, he's a half to Nazif. He won two Group Ones on soft ground. Heavy ground year. winner, yeah. So um, again, uh, it might depend on the ground, but it might not. Well, again, once again. So listen, if it rains at Royal Ascot, you've got one there. But it, it, it's fascinating that he's, a, I mean, he's a short. He's gone short, hasn't he, for that? It, it, that meeting at Sandown, I might bring George in it. it, it, it anything that went outside basically f finished best, didn't it? Yeah. Apart from one or two. And uh, was, it, was it Hurricane Lane on the inside? Uh, not Hurricane Lane. Um, uh, the other Godolphin horse uh, that was second to him, uh, conceding a penalty. Are we saying that he's very good as well? He, he's in the Eclipse, whose name escapes me. Well, he must be He, he must be very good because he got close, didn't he? And yeah. he was finishing really strongly at the end. He let it lightly exit in. But, I mean, again, he ran he, he ran almost up the rail, which no one else wanted to do. So yeah. Hampton Court, maybe, or something yeah. like that for him. I will get the name in a minute. George, uh, how much do we read into that at the moment? The ground. There's been so much rain, isn't there? We know these courses water to maintain a lush surface. How much, how much do you put into walking it with your jockey a steering course. Let's take Cashew, for example, at, at Monday night in Windsor. I was there, you were there. I saw her. She looked beaten, didn't she? But she had that far rail. She did, yeah. I, I mean, I I think there's a huge amount to to where you are on the track, and especially when the ground changes. You know, I, I was pretty keen for Ryan to get over on the far rail, and you know, she looked beat at one point, but everyone knows that when you've got that rail to run against, and, and it just invariably it is better ground over there, it's yeah, it, it, it makes a lot of difference. We, you know, Nick Bradley and I talk a lot on the phone and, and plan our races. And last year we had Miss Angel when she won at Newmarket. You know, she, we came to stand side and I, I'm very lucky we trained right outside the back door of the race course. And, you know, we kept on a straight line down the near side and everyone else came the other side. And we probably won the race because of that. Um, she then got more black type because we ran in the right part of the track at Newmarket. And yeah, there's a, a huge part of training mm. horses, running them in the right places, and and then the right places on the track. And it just makes you wonder about the guys that don't basically ride for these uh, these perceived biases. Uh, the name of that Godolphin horse was Highland Avenue. Highland Avenue. So. 
top two. And, and of course, you put one up in that. Let's just stick with this Heron stage because we think it was a very good race. The, uh, t- uh, t- the Rafe Beckett horse. Yeah, it just wasn't good enough in the end. Bull ace, but I mean, he's a really likeable horse. He's a good race, the Heron stage. Yeah, he's just been completely ruined the handicap mark as well at the same time. Oh, indeed. He might have to turn up in the St. James's Palace Stakes. What a couple of interesting big calls you've just got. Let's go to the Curra on Sunday. We know it's going to be deep ground and it's the Tattersall's Gold Cup Group 1. Lack of British interest in this race. Chris Cook in the week on the Racing Post flagged that up and said, you know, because we've won four of the last eight, we might think a mile two horse might go over. It would have been perfect weather for a day, wouldn't it? But of course it's been saved, we know, for later targets after his trip to Australia. Does that mean, Paul Keeley, that Broom is going to sweep them all aside? He might do three for three this season, so he's in pole position. He, he you know, he, he's um, obviously improved um, since last year. Um, I think he's probably the one to beat. It's fascinating, obviously. We've got a Derby winner coming back. Serpentine. Uh, Serpentine didn't run so well afterwards. Was it a complete fluke? Uh, quite possible, but we'll find out. You could say that piece of form is the best piece of form in the race. Um, but I would, you know, I would favour Broom. Um, Bit of a messy race because there's so many O'Brien horses in it and you're not sure. Tiger, Tiger Moth, really yeah. promising as well. Uh, so not a, probably not a race I'm, I'm that interested in playing in. But, yeah, uh, Search for a Song what? might improve back off that run last time Yeah, out. okay, and Pepper's no mug. Yes, like her a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. You know, I've always, I've always liked her. Um, but yeah, first time out, she might find Broom a bit sharp, mightn't she? Yeah, might do. Yeah. He's one of those horses, Broom Pat, isn't he? That punters don't really love, but he tends to get the job done. Yeah, he tends to go uh, under the radar a little bit, doesn't he? I think the way this Tattersall's Gold Cup, Aiden's got such a good record in it, you just start with him and then work through. I would imagine Broom, he could easily win this race on Sunday, couldn't he? But without necessarily going on to be the best out of the others that have run in the race. Serpentine, we've got the four-year-old version of him to see. Tiger Moth is in the could-be-anything section. So it's an interesting race, but Broom has got, as Keel said, his three runs already to his name this season and is the likely winner on that basis. But whether he remains the best of them all by the end of the year, I'm not so sure about that. I think Tiger Moth, Serpentine, Cayenne Pepper, Search for a Song. It's a tough old race, but fitness advantage in that ground, which will be very testing, I think it'll be very paramount to its chances. So Mm. I'd imagine Broom would be the one to beat here. Yeah, so, okay, this is perhaps a springboard to future targets for a lot of horses, but Broom, this is his big day in the sort of sun. Okay, then following on from the Tattersall's Gold Cup, it's classic action again, 3.15. The Phillies come out to shine the 1,000 guineas. Pretty Gorgeous didn't make the new market equivalent. She's got her ground here, though, Kills. She has, yeah. Won the Phillies Mile last year. I don't think you can argue with her, with her being favourite. It's how ready is she? She's trying with Joseph O'Brien. has got all the facilities in the world. I'm not, I would have thought she's going to be very ready. She's going to be, you know, she's definitely the one to beat. Mm. Um, not sure that I'm, I'm not sure the Guineas was a, 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 a Newmarket was a brilliant race by any stretch of the imagination. So Mother it, Earth ran well in France. Though. Uh, did run well in France. Yeah, did run well in France. But you know, and, and you know, could argue possibly should have won. But I'm, um, I'm sort of think that Pretty Gorgeous ought to be better than most of them. Um, the one I did like was uh, No Speak Alexander. I uh, thought she won really well the other day. They said that, that she'd been working really well uh, before that um, race and that she really likes juice in the ground. So she's got her conditions. Uh, and I would think, you know, I think she'd, she'd probably be a double figure price, just about. Mm. Um, I'd make her the each way play uh, against the Jolly, but the Jolly is solid. Very much so. I'm concurring with you, Kills. Um, this was the one horse, even over Thunder Moon and, and, and the old horses, he's got that Joseph thought might be the poster girl of his operation. And she probably is the class act. And, you know, if you look at her form last year, whenever she got on soft ground, she tended to have a one next to her. And I, uh, I, F- Fev Rover would be the obvious alternative. Like mate. She's just so lovely, isn't she? She's yeah. tough and she, she, she's she got the fitness edge. So I think she might be the angle with that as well. So Fav, expect it to win, but not crazy about the price. Uh, I'm never I'm never crazy about short prices anyway. Even if I think there's certainties, it's just not my, not the way I bet. But mm. but yeah, I think you know she's she's definitely the one to beat. Um, I might have a couple of quidditch where I no speak Alexander. Mm, pretty gorgeous to another beautiful man, Pat Cooney. <laughs> we'll just end the show on that. I think um, pretty gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Picture up, Pat. <laughs> oh, <laughs> absolute no need for that one. Oh, and the broom of a comment from Kiel's. <laughs> low blow, low blow. Yeah, pretty good. She won the, the Bet365 Phillies Mile. 
on the soft ground. She beat Mother Earth. Mother Earth win the guineas. And she was only a, a withdrawal at the 48 hours, wasn't she, for the, uh, the English 1,000 guineas. So she was on pace to run in the race. Best form and so forth. I don't know with this Joan of Arc, you know, the, the current second favourite Aidens. She's had the three runs. I don't know if I'm overcomplicated this and I'm too heavy ground centric here. When she was supposed to make her two year old debut on the 2nd of November at the Curra over seven furlongs on heavy ground, she was a non runner because of unsuitable ground. That's playing on my mind a little bit. So I can't really fancy her. That being said, she did win on softer heavy uh, at the start of the year. So I'm not, I'm a bit lukewarm about Joan of Arc. I keep coming back to Pretty Gorgeous as the yes, I suppose she'll win. I give a chance to Miss Amulet of uh, Ken Condon, who I had down as a five and six furlong filly uh, when she was started off racing last year. But she did end up running an excellent third in the Breeders' Cup over a mile. So maybe she can get the mile, has a turn of foot. Whether she can use that to her advantage on, uh, on, on Sunday on testing ground remains to be seen. I'm lukewarm, Joan of Arc. You end up fancying pretty gorgeous all the more, I think. Mm, Pat Cooney doesn't think that Joan of Arc will be lighting up any time soon. And some pot and kettles cold there. I'll tell you what, Chris. <laughs> so I couldn't resist it. Sorry, Pat. <laughs> all I wanted was a winner of the 1,000 guineas on Sunday. Turns out we've been having a pop at each other. Right, let's bring in our friends at MyRacing.com. Check out their Twitter feed. It's humongous for all the expert tips and analysis and their great website as well. They're going to give us a double uh, M&M this week for the guys at MyRacing.com. 320, Irish classic success can go to McSwiney for Jim Bolger and then play it up in the Sandy Lane Stakes a little bit later. It's Haydock with Mujbar. He loves the rain too. Weekend winner time. It's going to be a full time for you this weekend. And I'm going to give you in the Sandy Lane stakes at Haydock Mujbar. <coughs> Cannot rain enough for him. He will improve leaps and bounds. He'll do for me, Paul Keeley. Yeah, I really like Pendleton in the 350 at York. Really, really good comeback from a year and a half off the track at uh, Ascot uh, last time. Only just got collared by a horse that raced away from him. He thrashed a lot that, that, that he raced with. Um, he was called a big baby at the end of his three-year-old campaign by a jockey coloured wood Rodriguez. Now he's five. Uh, he travelled supremely well that day. I think he might end up better than the handicap. He's still only on 94. Sprints at Ascot at the minute are looking strong early season form. Pat Cooney. Uh, I'm off to the Curra, 425, and a filly number five called Holly Go Lightly. Jur Lyons, Colin Keane. Can't go too far wrong with that. She's had the three runs. She won very easily on soft ground in a maiden last time out. And interesting, I was reading the trainer comments after the race where the trainer's son described her as an exciting prospect. Well, she's only rated 87, so she's an exciting prospect. She could be up to winning this of a mark of 87. Unexposed, goes on the ground, top trainer, top jockey. What more do you want? Yeah, there you go, absolutely keeping it simple. Pat Cooney, Josh Bowie, let's come to you then. Uh, first of all, we've got quite a few runners on Saturday, George, but who would be the nap? Uh, yeah, we've got four at Newmarket and Superior mm. Force is a two-year-old who I like a lot. He um, he won well on debut. He, you know, it was over five furlongs and his work at home had been suggesting he won six. Um, he stepped up to six. Um, he'd be he'd be the best chance of the weekend for us, I'd say. Um, I hope he's a horse who can, you know, go to Ascot and, and be a Coventry horse, I'd say. Mm. And, and you've got two-year-olds that won't mind the ground there because it could be pretty soft at... At Newmarket, I imagine. What are your other runners looking like? Yeah, it's um, actually just looking out the window now. It's just started raining again in Newmarket. And um, he, he won on soft ground the other day. And, and you know, it's going to be even softer tomorrow. But he's, you know, he's fit and he's had a run. And there's a lot of inexperience in the race. You obviously have to worry about the Appleby horse. It could be anything. But um, he's in pretty good shape. OK, and we've talked about Mystery Angel. Really glad we got to mention him for her. I mean, everyone absolutely loves her here at the Racing Post, George. Of Nick Bradley Racing, of course. That's your dual-listed winner. Group success looks absolutely certain this year. Fingers crossed, all being well. Perhaps if Novello comes through next Thursday, might be the Norfolk for him? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, it, look, it looks the natural step. I, I think if there had been a race in between, I'd have run him in that. Um, he's an extraordinary horse. He just loves his work and he'd be he'd be the one that we'll take there i think beautiful sunshine might get an entry um but you know she only won last night and i think we'll probably go straight to queen mary with her but um novello he's ground versatile is you know his dam was a good horse on soft ground and, and he won at brighton down the hill on the road so um, 
he's quite a fun horse. Yeah, I think, I think fun is is playing him down a little bit. He's a he's an absolute rocket, isn't he? George, it's been a pleasure. What a pleasure our viewers will be thinking as well. Your strike rates are sizzling hot. Let's hope for another big weekend and a great year for you going forward. Thanks ever so much for coming on. Oh, man. Thanks so much. That's George Bowie then. Young up-and-coming superstar trainer in Newmarket. Paul Keeley, great to have you back on. I am going to be sitting indoors in a pub watching the racing all day tomorrow. They're actually letting you in. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. A ridiculous amount of relish for some reason. <laughs> Soon to be kicking him out probably as well. Pat Cooney, have a great weekend, man. Thanks for being on the show with us. What does it hold? Oh, just uh, head down, working away, but uh, going through all the formal, trying to find them soft ground horses. Look for the horses wearing Wellingtons in the parade ring, I think. Yes, very much so. Umbrella weather out there at the moment. Don't worry, it will turn. But at the moment, we'll lift your spirits here on What A Shout. That's the weekend action given to you. Don't forget to download the free must-have uh, Racing Post app. You can do that on the App Store or the Google Play Store itself. Don't remember? Or must always gamble responsibly. Don't forget to leave your comments, like and subscribe on YouTube, Facebook, of course, we're out there. Anything on Twitter, it's hashtag Watershout. So from myself, Dave Orton, signing off. This has been Watershout. Enjoy that sport.